It's always fun. Well, Alaya, we're looking forward to having you back. And Anne, I'd like to welcome you. We're really glad to have you as well. And uh, this is excellent. So Anne, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Great. We're really glad to have you. We're, we're looking forward to uh, including you on the show here and, and learning from you. Uh, I know that uh, you have some interesting things to show us here. Uh, you're also going to continue a look at landscape photography, but what's sort of your specialty when it comes to landscapes? What do you enjoy the most? I, like, I love landscapes, of course, but what I really like is the whole package, and that includes the culture of the area, the um, food, the people. And so when I do my workshops, uh, our groups work in a group setting where we try to give everyone the whole experience. Uh, we try to stay in a, we usually are in a remote location like the Isle of Skye or someplace. And um, it's helpful to stay together like an Airbnb or a small hotel where we can interact with each other uh, almost 24 seven. And um, we get a chance to eat together, to join locals. We yeah. usually have a local person with us. And uh, it, it gives you a better sense of how you want your landscape photography to go. Uh, today, I'm going to focus more on travel photography, um, but also with the uh, focus on landscapes. That's awesome. Well, we're, we're looking forward to seeing this. I'll keep an eye on the, the chat and Q&A, and from time to time, I might interject with a question, but uh, we're really glad that you could join us, and uh, why don't you go ahead and take it away, and uh, I'll just, uh, I'll confirm that you're screen sharing, so go ahead and give it a shot. Great. Well, thanks for having me today. Uh, I'm delighted to be here, and I hope that you'll find my presentation helpful for you uh, as you learn how to navigate through the Luminar program yourself. Um, I've made some slides to show some befores and after and a little bit of uh, quick editing. So hopefully that will help you. Let me share my Sounds screen. Sounds great. Here. A little bit about me anyway. Uh, I am a landscape photographer. I'm an ambassador for Skylum and I'm an ambassador for Nisi Filters as well. Uh, I run photo tours and workshops primarily in the UK. And um, we were scouting in Norway uh, last year in March. And um, we had to leave uh, on a whirlwind uh, trip there because of COVID. And I caught COVID on the way home. So I've had an exciting year. And I'm anxious to get back though, to traveling and doing some more landscape photography uh, beyond the United States. Um, I've been published in uh, online and print media. And um, I live in Birmingham, Alabama. I was formerly an attorney, before that a paralegal and a French teacher. I love Luminar software. It's very easy and intuitive. And the editing software uses artificial intelligence, as you know, to help with time consuming and complex editing tasks. It makes things easier for all of us. It can be used as a standalone system or as a plugin. And I like that. I use it as a plugin to Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, it has a quick learning curve. Beginners and occasional photographers can learn to edit images e easily with the templates. Uh, and the presets provide you with a variety of creative editing programs. Advanced photographers can manually take control of processing images with edit and provide a variety of tools such as array, sky replacement, atmosphere enhance, and so on. And I use those quite frequently. Uh, the before and after slider allows you to see the progress of your edit through your workflow. And that's very helpful as well. And the editing tools are very powerful and it's at a reasonable cost, and I like that portion of it. And you can add additional tools as you go, and plus there's no subscriptions. And I think that uh, Skylum offers a lot of opportunities for learning like today, and uh, that's very useful to all of us. And most of all, Luminar is fun. Who would I recommend Luminar to? Well, beginning and non-photographers who don't want to learn complex editing skills. Uh, it does so much of the work for you, and it gives you professional looking photos. Uh, both professionals and advanced photographers can save editing time. Photographers who want to make their images, landscape images really pop and social media influencers. Uh, you can get some really eye-catching photos with minimal processing time. Business photographers who make quick edits 
but you're short on time, portrait photographers, or anyone who just needs a well-rounded system. Um, how do I use Luminar to edit my images? I have a very easy, simple workflow. I generally just open my photos up in camera walk, raw, and I'll make any adjustments to the image there. Then I bring it into Photoshop, and then finally into Luminar, which I use as a plugin into Photoshop. And I use both the templates and the editing tools to process. So enough about me, let's get into um, looking at some photos that I have processed with Luminar. Um, these are just some before and afters that I've recently taken or had in the past. Um, I took a trip in March to Oregon and I was really excited about that, but uh, my week didn't turn out to be quite uh, the week of epic sunsets and sunrises that I had hoped for. And I had some nice uh, mellow skies, I would say, but um, nothing really epic like I was hoping. Uh, this is a before photo of Brandon Beach. Um, what I like about this is the soft sky and it's just a, a bit of a dreamy landscape. I edited this photo with using um, structure, light, and enhanced. And um, what I did was bring out the water here. It was um, more contrasty, and I just added a little bit of contrast to the sky up here. Enhanced really helped my sky feature here. Yeah, a lot of folks think they have to replace sky, but we use the same intelligent sky identification technology with the enhance tool so you could bring out the sky and you had a beautiful sky there it just needed a little hint i think a, a mistake a lot of folks make is they push the vibrance too far and then it looks fake but here it's just very natural i love how the reflections and the color carry onto the sand in the foreground those beautiful pastels you have there thanks rich this is another um shot from that trip um, over at Thor's Well. And that was a very exciting place to be. Um, it's very dramatic and uh, it's, it's kind of, I don't know how many of you have been there, but it's kind of a scary place because you're up there with this big hole and there's water blowing out and there's waves and it's, it's a little bit frightening, but it's also very exciting. And so I wanted to have a photo that captured the exhilaration that I felt and the excitement. Um, and this photo I like, but it's just not quite as dramatic as I would like for it to be. And I think it needed a little bit of a punch. So I edited this photo um, with the Easy Landscapes template, Forest Stream. And then I just added a little bit of Dodge and Burn here to lighten up this water and bring out the foam. So I think it makes it look a lot more dramatic than the original photo. And for those who haven't used the dodge and burn before, it's basically painting in light and shadows, which I, I like how you brought the water out there and the rocks a little bit. By just increasing the dynamic range, uh, it really came together nicely. Thanks. This next photo is one of my favorite places, uh, Dorset, England. We go there pretty often with our groups. And this photo of Dirtle Door uh, was taken at 4 a.m when uh, you have a real early morning sunrise there. And um, I love the pastel skies and uh, it's a little bit muddy though. So I was able to bring out the color by using the color tool, dodge and burn, and then uh, punched up the sky with the enhance tool. Here's a photo that I took in Buder, Iceland. Um, what I really liked and what drew me was the isolation here. We had arrived here the night before and it was a blinding snowstorm. We barely thought we could make it to the hotel at Buder. And um, we got there and it was very quiet, peaceful and still. And this photo was taken just when the sun was coming up, which is about 9.30 a.m. in the morning in February. And there was a beautiful indigo blue sky uh, but what doesn't show up in this photo are the ridges which drew me to the photo or to the image. Um, I like the shadows here and ridges uh, and it gave a leading, nice leading line to the mountain here. I edited this photo using the Waterscapes collection. 
uh, deep focus. I replaced the sky to bring in some more drama up here and to show how it actually looked with the indigo color. And I erased this smudge that was down at the bottom with the erase tool. The next photo was taken at Harris Beach again in Oregon. Um, this day was uh, very windy and there was sand blowing real swiftly across um, the beach here. And uh, this rock was very colorful, a lot of um, earth tones and there were some um, plants on it. I wanted to bring those out. Yeah, so, and when I look at this photo, I notice one thing that a lot of folks miss. You didn't go perfectly perpendicular to the rocks. Like a lot of people see uh, a feature like this and they, they, they angle themselves up at a perfect right angle. You have a little bit of a, a diagonal going on here. You know, for those who don't think that way, what's the logic here? Why do you add that little sense of perspective to it? I just think it makes the photo look more dynamic. I'd, I'd agree. It gives it a little bit more sense of energy and a little bit of sense of perspective of going off into the horizon there. And, and it looks like to me that that little part at the far right there, is that another island that's a little further away? It was another uh, a rock, a sea stack, I suppose you could call it, another rock that was out in the water. What I did here, I um, lightened it, of course, with light. And I wanted to show the sand, so I used, uh, I lightened it, brought in the color to show the beautiful colors on the rock and in the sky. And then with the enhanced tool, I was able to punch up the structure uh, on, this, on the beach and to show the blowing sand. I used mystical just here in the corner uh, where you spoke about that other rock ridge. I thought it gave it more of a dreamy feel. And that's what I was going for here. Yeah, I, I love both mystical and glow. They both add extra light to the scene. Mystical sort of darkens the light and increases the shadows and makes it moody. And then glow or Orton kind of just adds to it, but they're both very natural and they don't tend to blur the image. They just add soft light and they kind of improve the shadows and the highlights. So I like how you did that there. And you know, we could just see so much more texture in the sand here, and it's very inviting. You could sort of see where the wind has been blowing it and those little curving lines caused by the wind patterns. It just pulls you sort of windingly into the rocks. It's very visually interesting. Thank you. Uh, this, same fo this photo was taken at the same beach that same night. And this photo I probably should have deleted, but I wanted to show, um, our viewers how you can take a photo that is pretty much a throwaway photo and with Luminar you can make it more artistic and a useful travel photo. Um, I used sky replacement to enhance the sky and uh, because it was totally blown out and uh, I used enhance to give some texture here in the water. Now with this next set of uh, slides I'm going to show some photos uh, that I have uh, used the software with. And um, we're, I'm going to go through more steps in detail. Uh, this was a raw file uh, that I had taken of a place called Black Church Rock in Devon, England. And this was a place that I had been looking forward to going to for a long time. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how far it is to hike there, but it's a bit of a strenuous hike. And once we got down there, uh, there are rocks like this that parallel across the beach, along the beach. So you have to walk across numerous uh, rock formations like this to get to the spot. Uh, but what was really disappointing was that we had absolutely no color in the sky. It was totally whited out like you see here. So this image has just been sitting on my hard drive for the longest time. And um, I thought this might be one that I could play with in Luminar to see what we could do to make it uh, an image that was worthwhile. So I brought the image up um, into Luminar and I used the template Big City Lights, which gives more dynamic range in the photo. It really punches up the rocks. Um, it makes it look more exciting and dramatic. I used the preset City Thrills. Um, 
I did not bring the slider all the way to the right. I usually, if I'm going to use a preset, uh, the presets or the templates have already done a lot of the work for you. Um, so I will often use those and then go into edit and fine tune everything. But um, anyway, I thought City Thrills kind of brought up the dynamics really well in this photo. I am not an astrophotographer, um, but I thought that this sky, Galaxy 2, was a great sky replacement for this photo. It, it kind of has a Game of Thrones feeling for me. And uh, I thought that the, the Galaxy 2 just worked really well. It makes the photo more exciting. It has um, kind of a mystical feel. And that's what I was going for here. Then I decided to punch it up even more. So I just increased the slide, the City Thrill slider. So here was the original file. And here's the final edit. Uh, this next slide was the Buddha church. It was taken on the same day that the um, photo that I showed you earlier with the mountains. And um, this was a little bit, probably about an hour or so later. And the sky was pretty much uh, nondescript there. So I wanted to add a little bit of texture to the sky. So I replaced the sky. Um, I, first of all, I used the template Easy Landscapes uh, collection and I chose a preset snowfall, which added some drama in the foreground and um, punched up the church and the mountain range in the background. But the sky was still dull. So and, I and what I want to reinforce here for folks yeah. is that you know you're you're really tapping into why we had the templates. The templates are are meant to just get you started and to kind of point you in the right direction so that you can spend less time guessing or experimenting, but then, you're doing exactly what's intended. You're customizing it and tweaking it to match your needs. And, and that's why they're there. They're not just meant to be locked in or, or stationary. They're just meant to jumpstart you. And I, I love how you are being open to trying out, you know, things from different categories just because you like the color or the contrast or the mood that it was going for. Yeah, that's a, and that's a good point. I, I was hesitant as a photographer to use the templates at first. But um, the more I got into the program, I started using the templates more and more, uh, just to kind of jumpstart it. it. It does some things that I would do manually and uh, I can adjust the slider there and go into edit and fine tune the way I want it. So I'm showing the uh, sky here. I used uh, Dramatic Sky 4 in Sky Replacement. Uh, this is just too much though, it's a bit over the top. So I wanted to soften the sky. I made my adjustments within the uh, sky replacement tool, which I wanna make a comment here. Uh, the tool really has advanced from the initial sky replacement. Um, one of the things that I didn't like about it was that the tool didn't allow for a horizontal adjustment, but that's been taken care of with the new program. And uh, it's really helpful to really customize your skies. So what I did here was to adjust the Arctic uh, template um, to about, oh, 35% opacity, and that toned down the sky to give it a more realistic look from there to there. Then I adjusted and edit the lights for shadows and highlights. And then I wanted to point out um, one feature that I really like with the software is the history feature. And you can go back and look and see what you've done um, and what kind of edits. And this just shows I've, I've done quite a bit here uh, with every little tweak, it shows up in history and that's uh, very helpful when you're editing. So finally, this is before. And this is the final edit. A few years ago, I went to Bow Lake um, in Banff National Park. And I was so fortunate to have this place all to myself. There's usually tons of photographers there, but uh, this was a morning in July and I was all alone here. And um, I really underexposed this photo. I was using filters and I um, 
must have left it on too long or something. But anyway, uh, this is the photo. And I thought this would be a good one to see if we can um, repair it. So I used the template scenery collection, the preset clear and sharp, and that did all the sharpening for this photo that I wanted. And with edit tool, I lightened up the photo. I made some adjustments with highlights uh, and shadows. Finally, uh, with the enhance tool, I um, enhanced the sky and the rock in the foreground. The day, that day was a very beautiful summery day and I wanted to punch up the color as I really saw it that day. And of course, if you've been to Canada, to Banff, you know that all the water has this beautiful turquoise color. So I was able to bring that turquoise color back in with the edit tool, Color Harmony. And this is just to show you my before and after with the before and after slider tool, which is very handy. So my before and my final edit. Another one of my favorite places in Dorset is Corp Castle. And this was a uh, ruin from, I think about the 16th century. Uh, it was a home to Henry VIII and there's not much left of it now, but um, it sits on a high point, a promontory and uh, they could see whoever was coming after them or coming to visit or whatever. And um, there are a few man-made objects now around the castle. As you can see, for some reason or other, my mouse has decided to die. So if anything can go wrong, I guess it has today. But um, you can see here on this photo, on the far side of the screen, there's a cell phone tower and there is um, a parking lot and a modern home. And there's a shrub down at the bottom, which is uh, a little bit objectionable to me. So I first opened uh, this photo in the template Easy Landscapes Collection, and I used the preset for a stream. And then I took the edit tool erase and those items that I was talking about earlier, I have masked to show you uh, what I've erased. So as you can see, those items are gone now and I've used the sky replacement sunset number four. I chose this sky because it had a sun in it. And when I brought it into the photo, the sun was on the left. So with the horizon tool, I was able, or horizon slider, I was able to bring my sun where it would be normally uh, placed if the actual sun had been shining that morning and it would have been shining behind the castle ruin. Um, if you're, there's another hill opposite this hill and there it's usually crawling with photographers, but that day, I think there was myself and just another person that morning. Um, but anyway, depending on where you're standing on the hill, you can see the sun rays coming through uh, the openings in the castle. So um, this particular sky does not have sun rays. So what I did was go back in with the edit tool and I added sun rays to my photo uh, which probably would have been there in that position. Um, but if you'll notice the sun rays uh, look really unreal because they wouldn't be coming up above into the clouds, but they would be shining down below onto the landscape. So what I did was go in and paint and you sh I show here the mask that um, I've used to paint in my rays where I wanted them. And so with this edit, it shows the sun rays, uh, which are just a, just a subtle change here and not the big drama that you'd seen there earlier. Finally, uh, one of the things that Corf Castle is known for is its mist. And on this particular morning, there wasn't a lot of mist. And of course, with the sun shining through like that, uh, the mist would have dissipated. So I wanted to add just a little bit of mist um, and I did that with the uh, atmosphere tool and I used um, the uh, layered fog. And so I just have the fog down around the valley where that would have been. So I painted that in. It looks great, Anne. And I see you've got uh, your contact information to share with folks. Where can they get in touch with you to learn more? Um, well, you can find me on Facebook and Robinson Strickland, or okay. you can find me um, on Instagram and Strickland Photographer. 
I'm working on my website now. We, uh, I'm changing directions. And uh, so I'm switching from my old website to a new one, which I'll have out in a few weeks. That's awesome. And Anne, there are some questions in the chat pod uh, that if you have a moment to, to stay around and answer a few questions in chat, people would appreciate that, I'm sure. So okay. that's excellent. Uh, folks, we're going to be, I, I want to first off say thank you to Anne. We're going to be going to our, our next guest in just a moment. Anne, that was a very thoughtful presentation. And I love how you were very willing to show where you started and where you ended up. It's, it's very helpful for people to see that, you know, a lot of folks mistakenly think that, oh, everything works perfectly in camera and it always turns out just right. It's, it's great to see that, you know, how you dealt with the challenges that nature threw in front of you and got the photos that you wanted. So I think it was very helpful that you revealed where you started and where you ended. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for having me this morning. I, I hope that um, our viewers will find some of these tips helpful. <laughs>